All right, what's going on, everybody? Um, welcome back. Uh, a bit of a misnomer here in the flight description today. I was thinking we were going to make it to the Bahamas, but it doesn't look like we are. So um going to make it over to the edge of Cuba here. Kashif, what's going on? Wilbur, good to see you. Bob, how you doing? And uh, Casey Pilot, welcome aboard. Got a new channel member today, which is always cool stuff. And we are going to now get ourselves going because time is a waste and external power supply on. Let me get my fidgeting in my chair done. Uh, Chris Loach, how are you, sir? Good to see you. Mixtures and props full forward, rotating beacon on. Sorry for all the movement of my, my head thing here. Uh, just just fidgeting all right rotating beacon on mixtures and props full forward master and battery switches on go fuel valves open we'll go fuel pumps on magnetos on left and uh connor scully how are you sir it is a good start to the day we got a great crowd already and let's see here Let's crack the throttles. Let's take a look outside. Make sure there's nobody out here to kill or maim. And there is not. Pose on the brakes. Start the right engine first. And we got traffic off the right-hand side. And there is right engine. Good start. Oil pressure looking good. Left prop is clear. And good start. Oil pressure is good. Let's go mags to both. Close the starter. Let's turn the fuel pumps off. Bring the throttles back just a little bit. Mixtures back a little bit. Oh, Chris is coming in from uh, from uh, Key West. Chris, I love the fact that you fly that airplane like absolutely everywhere. I think that's such cool stuff. It's great. You look like you really enjoy that plane, which is great. So, mixtures lean for taxi, nav and strobe lights, or pff, avionics master coming on, nav, nav and strobe lights coming on. Got Sheaf Collins in the Twin Otter. Now, that is going to be a nice looking airplane to see. Um, I mentioned in the Discord earlier, I'm like deliriously tired today. I have no idea why. Um,. Part of the reason, part of the reason is uh, is my dog doesn't understand time changes, and so he just wakes you up no matter like whenever he's ready, whenever he's ready to go, and that tends to be like as soon as the sun comes up. But Z Sim Pilot, let me see here. Let me see here. Where is? I don't see any notif ah don't see any notification yet, Captain. Um, Captain, did you send that on on uh, Microsoft? I don't see it yet. All right, uh, let's see what we've got going on here on Volanta. We've got a good crowd. We've got a good crowd. All right, we are westbound today to. Um, what is the name of this airport? We are westbound to Gustavo Rizzo International Airport. I don't know if it's international, but it is right in the water, so it should be a cool approach. All right, so let's release the parking brake. Do, 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 do. Mixtures and leaned. Z Sim Pilot, I should see it, and as soon as I do. I will, I will uh, accept that, good sir. All right, runway zero 08, but I think the winds are out of the west today, which is part of the reason why it's going to take forever to do this flight. Um, the last, I don't know if you guys saw, I did the, uh, the runway 28 approach into Princess Juliana yesterday, which was pretty wild. Actually went a lot, whole lot better than I thought it would. And gave me a ton of confidence, actually, in the in the. Uh... Yeah, look at these 
grab textures is terrible. Um, all this too. Um, gave me a ton of confidence in the 737 because that is a uh, D dog. What's going on? Dude, that was a tough approach. But it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Chris, they're a little wacky down there in Key West. They literally think they're their own country. You know, they're they're a little loopy. I think, I think the sun gets to them down there. <laughs> Bob, thank you. That was it was a lot of fun. All right, let's put some flaps in here. Let's put some fuel pumps on. We'll go mixtures full forward, props full forward. We're looking. Uh, it's. Uh, let me make sure that I mean the wind socks are correct, right? Ah, oh, it looks like a dead crosswind now. All right, cool. So we'll see what we can do here. All right, takeoff power is coming in. Takeoff power is set. Engine instruments are in the green. Airspeed is alive. And this is this is a crosswind correction on takeoff. That's how you that's how you really do it. You can Microsoft Flight Simulator, but in the real world, that's how you do it. So we are airborne. 90 knots would be good. I had a, I got a couple of videos from, uh, as a matter of fact, Z-Sim Pilot, I got to send those to you. I got uh, a couple of videos from some people I know in St. Martin that, uh, that took videos of that Spirit Airlines landing runway 2A yesterday, which is pretty wild. I will drop the nose here a little bit, put the flaps up. And Kind of surprised to see mountains down that way, but hey, we are good. And uh, let's zoom out here just a little bit. Not quite what our heading is, but it's about this. Yeah, Z, I got. I'll put, I'll put those up. Uh, Wayne sent me those. <laughs> Z Sim Pilot and I have a common a common friend in Anguilla who flies. Uh, 1,000 feet AGL, we'll turn the fuel pumps off, check the fuel pressures, fuel pressures are looking good. And, uh, yeah, that that whole thing was pretty wild yesterday. And it was all over the Caribbean, they were actually doing some runway 28 landings there today. Uh, in, in, uh, in Juliana again today. So probably like a zero nine five heading will get us good. Um, so they're still having those uh, still having those westerly winds. So whoopsie daisy. So let's get a look outside here. Got one plane right behind me. Let's see here. Whoopsie! It's a little bit too nose up there. Josh, what's going on? The Twin Otter is no longer for sale, unfortunately. So, uh, was it uh, was it Aerosoft that, that developed that plane? And uh, and then for whatever reason, they decided to uh, they decided to pull it and. There's been a lot of speculation, like what they're gonna do with it, if anything. I mean, you would think they're gonna do something, um, but they, well, not Aerosoft. They didn't, they didn't say who they sold it to or who took it over or whatever. Maybe Ayala. What's going on? Como estás, amigo? And uh, so I don't, I don't really know what the story is with the with the Twin Otter, but um, you can't buy it right now. If you bought it before, you can use it, obviously, but you can't buy it new now, unfortunately, which is silly. So it was a cool plane. All right, let's bring the props back a little bit. Power back to 23. It's nose it over. And we are westbound at 3,000. We are westbound at 3,000. So... Yeah, let me see what 
I think I'm supposed to be on here. Zero nine six. Um, so there are there are two uh, points of interest on the southern coast here of Cuba, but. I do believe they are on both on the other side of those mountains, which is not going to make them easy to get to. Um, this farmland is so cool. I don't know why I find it so fascinating. Um, Tiger Moth, we are on the East USA server. We are on the East USA server. Um, so that's looking all right. Welcome to Cuba. Look at this. Beautiful day. And for those of you who saw the video that I just did this morning, I have all of my filters off. Like all those, those post-processing nonsense. All of it is now gone. So this is just pure, unadulterated Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's great, in my opinion. It's kind of weird doing um, <laughs> the idea that we're not looking at Microsoft Flight Simulator through eyes. This is not meant to be somebody's eyes. This is simply this is this is a camera. We're supposed to be looking at it through a camera, and I don't want to look at it through a camera. I want to, you know, I don't want dirt. I don't want like you know lens distortion, all this weird stuff. And if you look at this, like I do a lot of flying over territory like this in real life because where I live is a lot of open flat terrain. Um, and I do a lot of flying at 3,000 feet over open flat terrain. And this is exactly what it looks like. I mean, it, just, it gets to be kind of fuzzy off in the distance a little bit. Um, but, I mean, this, these changes are great. I think this looks really good. Thinking of retiring the DC-3 and getting to grips with the 414. Yeah, I mean, you know what's funny? I've been I've been meaning to get out in the 414 myself, and um, they updated the beta, so this is 138.11 that I'm flying on right now, and uh, I, I really want to try the. Um, I really want to try the the, uh, the A320 again, A319 or A320, whatever it is, A320. Which is weird because I'm not an Airbus guy, but I'm interested in that plane for some reason. Okay, now we finally got rid of some of that left, that right lean here. Jim Bridgman, what's going on? So you, you're talking about the the visuals, right? It looks really good. Jim probably knows a lot about 3,000 feet in the air. That's where you do most of your flight training. I'm bopping along at 3,000 AGL. I think it looks fantastic now. So, but yeah, it's fun to it's fun to learn new planes, you know. I'm kind of interested in the uh, in the A320, particularly at the price that it's uh, being offered for, which is nothing. Lean mixtures a little bit, and. Cool, so I hope everybody's enjoying their Friday. Leaning. I just heard from my mechanic 
that my plane is my Cherokee is going to be done tomorrow. But given the fact that it's March 30th tomorrow, he said, "Why don't I just wait and sign it off on Monday, on April 1st, and then you get a whole another month of whole another month of uh, coverage of your annual." And I said, "Okay, sounds good to me." So I get my plane back on Monday, which is good stuff. I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do this year in terms of flying. I didn't really, I, I kind of flew around in circles last year. I didn't really do much flying last year. The year before, I did a ton. And uh, actually, now that I think about it, I've got a week in... I've got a week in the end of July. Whoops. That almost was bad. Um, I've got a week in the end of July where I'm going to be by myself. My girlfriend's going to be away. And I'm sort of thinking about maybe taking like a big plane trip somewhere. Taking the plane and actually flying somewhere. And I was thinking about maybe doing like Florida, or more specifically the Bahamas. I don't really have the time to do something crazy like St. Martin, which I want to do someday of my life. But I do have time to fly down to Florida and back. So I'm kind of thinking about that. Kind of thinking about that. We'll see. So do we have anybody that can see anybody else? Or am I the only one who can't see anybody? Yeah, Bob, that would be pretty cool stuff. We'll see. But really, I mean, part of my mitigating factor will be the will be the the, uh, the Anguilla trip in August because that's going to be two weeks which is going to mean it will it will have it will require extensive financial resources if you know what I mean so I don't know if I feel like spending a whole bunch of money a month and a half before that flying down to uh, can you say your ad name? Um, it is on Microsoft. It is that. Can see everybody with me. I'm sorry about that. Cause she, I keep doing this because it's probably because I'm in the beta. But sorry guys, I apologize for not being with the group. People are promoting over the top turbulence, mega bad in the DC3. Oh, okay. Well, you know, yeah, Chris, that with that thing being uh, being lightly loaded, it might it might very well be a bit of a kite, you know. Well, now we're gonna descend, I guess. Yeah, I think might be a bit of a kite with, uh... Yeah, this could be a long flight. <laughs> Roger, Captain. Yeah, I think the headwinds are pretty... Pretty significant. Let's see if I can find some weather here. We're going to find some weather somewhat in the area. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Let's go. Uh, winds aloft here. Oh, cool. I got, okay, I got four in trail here. Captain Hunter, we got 
Kashif, we got Connor right behind me. So I can see everybody on uh, on Volanta. If I went to <laughs> Key Western News. Um, I could open my um, four flight and get the uh, ground speed is one twenty two. Yeah, so we we got a good we got a good headwind then. We got a good headwind then. Z Swift nine eighty three. Go accept that real quick. There we go, Captain. They should have more weather information available in the sim. Like you should be able to get winds aloft in the sim. All right. Well, that's not too bad then, Jim. That's not too bad then. Maybe we're not doing so bad. That can't be the R the the one eighty two RG that you're in with that ground speed, no? So Nah, it's not too bad. It's like 145 miles this leg. I was gonna <laughs> I got uh I, 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 I went in the little nav map and I was like okay well, let me just see how you know I, I named the stream Cuba to Bahamas before I looked and then I and then I went into little nav map and I put in uh put in which that, or which island was that? Um, Great Iguana. I figured we'd head over there, and then I realized it's like 200 and something miles. No, that's not gonna work. So, but I wish they, I wish they would give you a little bit more weather information. Like winds aloft would be nice. It'd be good to know for the bug smashers down here, you know. There is a pretty little village. Let's see what that village is. Oh, okay, a little nap map shows the weather. That is Bayamo, Cuba, right there, and there was a little airport. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, there's a little airport right there, I think it is. No, it's gotta be. Huh. Maybe something somewhere right along here. A little east west runway. But it looks like a crosswind. 034 it says at about 25 knots so cooker saucer 985 so it's got to be like right about here the crosswind not too bad not too too bad and there we go yeah Bob I was thinking the same thing because I was thinking of <laughs> I was thinking about getting to uh I was thinking about heading up to my iguana, but that's going to be... So I think the next trip, we can do Great Iguana and then up to my iguana, which is where Brooks is from. And hopefully he'll be there for that for that round. That'd be, that'd be really cool. <laughs> Chris. Yeah. Oxygen masks are no fun. In real life. 
gosh, this is beautiful. But uh, so sim update 15, the newest beta is pretty good. Pretty good stuff. And I'm still really liking the uh, the Toby Eye Tracker, and I know I honestly like I never thought I would uh, I'd switch from the track IR, but this thing is just great. No cable is just worth its weight in gold. Kashif, we are going to let me type it in here. Uh, Mike Uniform Bravo Alpha. And it should be a cool... It should be a cool, uh... Approach and landing, because it's right... It's another one of those ones that's right over the water. I feel lonely. Look how, I mean, I think this looks great. I really do. It looks really, really good. <laughs> I don't know why I love this farmland so much. I'm like fascinated with the farmland. To fly high over some highish mountains. Yeah, it's kind of looking a little mountainous, isn't it? I need to get, I need to get out me. I need to get out me VFR charts here. So I'm making 126 knots over the ground. I guess I can get more information from little nav map than I realize. Um, so I got my IFR low chart out here. Yeah, they're talking 5400 out ahead of us. So that might be... Let's see, get my VFR map out here. Oh yeah, there's no VFR charts for Cuba. So IFR low charts. Let's see here. Yeah, we might have to do some climbing here. Eight thousand is the minimum in route altitude on that. All right, let's do some climbing then. And then I can use that as an excuse for why I'm four hundred feet above my desired altitude already. I can pretend I meant to do that. Kashif, that's moving. So you're in the uh, you're in the the uh, twin outer, huh? Thirty three oh seven years. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be three hundred and seven feet higher than I <laughs> than I was. So um, it sh should, yeah, it should, it should. I looked in I looked in the Navigraph app right now. Good old Aroka. And I'm also not on course, which is not good either. Lean a little bit more here. Gosh, it looks good. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, for it's it's uh, the Rokos aren't for VFR, but the, but that's the that's what you that's kind of the trick, especially if you don't have a VFR chart, which I don't for Cuba. Just look at the IFR charts and see what the uh, see what the sector altitudes are. There's a couple guys from uh, from Winair who flew the they're one of their twin otters up to Canada for uh, probably maintenance I would guess. Um, it was last year, or the year before, 
and uh, they put they put videos of it on YouTube, and I watched it. That must have been a fun flight. Now we get some IFR here, fellas. I'm gonna climb up to 55 at least. I mean, maybe 75 makes a little more sense. 75 might make a little more sense. Simply because nobody has ever hit the sky. It's one of the better pieces of advice I've ever heard about flying. If you're in trouble, climb. Nobody has ever hit the sky. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're gonna go with 75. If there's, if there's, uh, yeah, you know what? Actually, probably, uh, Miss Girl Blue, you probably, it's, it's probably. So you, if it's 3307 on the route, then the sector altitude would be about 5400. If it's mountainous terrain, it's 2,000 feet clearance. But, no reason not to go up and get a nice view, right? Michael, what's going on? I'm rocking back and forth is what's happening. I might get a little bit more uh... yeah I'm gonna go well fit that 5400 should give you 2,000 feet of clearance but um... yeah but the winds are a little better up here too actually so go get some free go get a free push you know Try fly 70, you can't hit the sky. Yeah, that's easy, and your dad was absolutely right. Your dad was absolutely right. Three most useful things, useless things in aviation. The runway behind you, the fuel that you didn't take with you, and the altitude above you. Because none of them do you any good. Yeah, Connor, I'm seeing a bit of a tailwind, too. Um, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure Jim's got some stories, too, but, like, I've seen some just heartbreaking accidents of, of people, like, not using the full runway. You know? I mean, you, it, the, the, that's the, the weird thing about aviation... Is it, it is it is truly the uh, yeah I may want to push my oh wait my, <laughs> my props are max or my manifold pressure is max I can't can't go any um, it is truly Murphy's law that rules aviation because nothing goes wrong uh, <laughs> or at least things don't tend to go wrong in aviation until it's the absolute worst possible time for it to happen and it just it's it's crazy I've seen some wacky thing I'm an, I'm an obsessive reader of plane crash accident reports I've, I've probably read thousands of NTSB reports in my life and some of them are hard to believe Some of them are truly hard to believe. Now this is a nice looking... Look at this. That is beautiful right there. That is gorgeous.
I am really liking these new uh, these new visual settings. Really liking these. Yeah. Oh, I got my carb temperature gauge, and we are right on the top of the carb ice range. Cool thing about having a carb temperature gauge. So my instructor used uh, my my no 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 no. That's the parking brake. You dope. Um, my first instructor used to say that carb ice was like or carb heat was like being pregnant. Uh, ground speed Z Sim pilot is 153 knots. We are moving now, baby. So climbing really helped. Um, I'm making 153 right now. Uh, but my my first instructor used to say that that uh, carb heat was like being pregnant. You you either are or you aren't. In other words, like if if you suspect carb ice. You don't put a little bit of carb heat in and see what happens. You just put it all the way on. And uh, the only exception to that rule is if you have a carb temperature gauge, which is this. So you can just you can just put in just enough carb heat to keep yourself out of the yellow carb ice range, and then you're good to go. And, uh, yeah, that's actually a very handy little gauge. So, like in this climb here, it's looking much, much better. <laughs> yeah, Jim. <laughs> yep, looking good. Most people don't have a carbon tub gauge. the mountains, obviously, that we were talking about. I need to lean again here. About right there should be good. So, looking good. Have a quick look at the old Valanta here. Yeah, I got overtaken by a couple of people because she was off to my left. Connor Scully in the Bonanza. Hey, he's going to blow all of us away. The bow is a fast airplane. I need to go a little left here. So Easter kind of snuck up on me this year. I wasn't really thinking about it. And then I realized the other day that like every... I work in... A, I work in most of the people that I work with are in London. Um, and I realized the other day that they're not going to be, like, none of them are working on Monday, and I, I started wondering why. Because in the U.S., we work. It's what we do. You know? Yeah, Chris, that's absolutely true that, um, Lycoming engines are, are much less susceptible to, to carb ice than continental engines are. Because the Lycoming engines have the uh, fuel pan mounted on top of... Or fuel pan. <laughs> Hot fuel, there's a good idea. Um, they have the... Uh, I'm trying to remember how it, how it is. Jim might know. Um, the, I think the carburetor is mounted on top of the oil pan or something like that, so it keeps it warm. But I had a, 
I had some friends who had a it was a Cessna 170B and they used to joke that the the main purpose of the engine was to create ice and the second purpose of the engine was to provide propulsion for the airplane <laughs> um, Ian, it's running beautifully right now it's running really, really nice Um, for this sim update it's been running really well the entire time um, the first the first beta release for sim update 15 was a little bit was it just it was, there was a lot of crashing a lot of people were having crashing issues myself included but like performance wise it's very good some people have been complaining about the the uh, level of details like the you know the radius of detail but I mean to me I, I can't tell any difference and like you see people put up these pictures and they're like look you can't see anything in that mountain over in the distance like whatever you know I think people get a little obsessive to me it looks good and it's fun and it's very smooth you know um, uh, you Usama if you're using um, the Toby eye tracker the uh, there's a setting. Let me, let me hop real quick. It, well, first of all, is that what you're using? Are you using the Toby? If you're using the Toby, I can tell you what it is. And if you're using the Track IR5, I can send you my profile because my I had a really good uh, profile for uh, for Track IR. And the funny thing is, when I first started using the the uh, the um, Toby, it was uh, it would register my head movements when I was talking. Okay, the, the Toby. So here, what you need to do in the Toby is um, do 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 do. You come over here. You go into the sensitivity settings and center stabilization. This is the one you want. And I got mine at 0 0.58 and, and like. So it's basically a dead zone. The further you have it to the right, the bigger your dead zone is. The further you have it to the left, the smaller your dead zone is. So over here, you're going to get shaking. Over here, you're going to get no shaking at all. So that's the one that you want to adjust for uh, for that particular issue. But when I, when I first got this thing, when I was talking, it would be going, it would be going like this while I was talking. <laughs> and it would be like, so I had to figure out what the what the setting was. But I, re I really like it. I think it's great. I, I didn't realize because it's called the Toby Eye Tracker. I didn't realize it's actually both. It's a, Yeah, no problem, Usama. You're very welcome. Um, I didn't realize it was a head tracker as well. Like, I don't have any of the eye tracking on. Because the thing with the eye tracking, to me anyway... Um, is like it's it's useful if you're in a plane where you can't see all the instruments. Like if 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 you were like if you had like a view like this on Final Approach, it would be useful because you could just use your eyes just to glance down. Um, but for me, the I, I find that the eye tracking a little bit distracting because. Like if I'm if I just look over at the at the GPS for example, or if I look down at these gauges, and it just it goes like that, you know, it doesn't move that much, but it moves a little. And I just found it distracting. I just found it distracting, so I just use the I just use it purely as a head tracker. And I think it's I think it's great. I really like it. I like it quite a bit actually. And uh, this is such a cool airplane. I, mean, I understand it's not like the most. It wouldn't be a really, I don't know, the wisest choice for like a personal transportation airplane, or the most practical, I guess. But it would be a great, 
Have you owned one of these? It'd be a phenomenal airplane to own. You know, two, three hundred horsepower engines, you could carry a boatload. You know, it's relatively fast, hundred and you know, hundred and fifty knots, not too bad. Speed is overrated in planes. Unless you're talking about like a unless you're talking about like a Cirrus or a Bonanza or something like that, that's like really fast. You know, the the difference between like a an arrow and a Cherokee is not that much. Yeah, Chris, I I had uh, the thing I like about the about the track IR is you could do more like it was it was a little easier to do things like this, you know. But I'm 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 quite used to this thing now. The Toby. I love I love the track IR. It's just the cable, just the cable. You know? Yeah, Kashif, I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, I don't know if you guys know uh, XP72. He's like a pretty well known streamer. I think pretty much everybody knows him. But he streams on medium settings. He's like, no, why should I, you know? And I guess it really depends on what you're doing, you know? Um, but yeah, I think people, I think people get way too, way too obsessive. Yeah, exactly, Kashif, and that's and that's that's kind of like the point of my channel in a lot of ways. Is like I, you know, I I try to keep the. I mean, I want to get good visuals, obviously. But I don't, I don't want to go nuts over it. I want to get good performance, and I don't want to go nuts over that either. You know what I mean? Like I just want to have good, stable performance, good visuals, and that's good enough for me. And I, I started at one point messing around with the, uh, messing around with the shaders or whatever they're called, the uh, Nvidia. Um, what are they called? I um, think. Yeah, the, okay, the, the filters, the NVIDIA filters. I started messing around with those once. I, I watched a video. And, I, and the, the first of all, the thing about the filters is that nobody else's, nobody else's screen or nobody else's settings are going to look the same on your screen as they do on their screen. You know, so you can watch somebody's video who's got great visuals and set it up exactly the same way on your screen. It's not going to look the same, you know. Um, and like, you get like the perfect like sky color, and then the water wouldn't look right, and or like the green would be too green, or what? And it's like you know, never mind. Too much, too much, uh, too much messing around, too much fiddling around. Yeah, Kashif, I had a I had a 1080. I, I told I think I told you that I had a 1080 for up until like a year ago, and that that 1080 was great. The 1080 was great, you know. Um, Robert, it's yeah, it's definitely um, it's definitely gotten better. I mean the. The biggest problem was the crashes that with the first like two releases, and they, I haven't, I haven't had any crashes in the last like three releases, and I don't really think from reading, like from watching the forums, that crash, crashes have really been an issue lately. So I mean, it's it's pretty stable if that's what you're looking for, you know. And I like I, I've pretty much been in every beta since like the third one, and most of them have been pretty good, really. 
couple issues here and there, but nothing too crazy. But thanks for thanks for joining us, Robert. Good to see you. Um, hold my head tracker still and take a sip of my tasty beverage here. Just water for anybody who's curious. Um, But it's funny because she, if you think about Bombasso, what's going on? Um, I I don't I don't really remember a really bad one, Robert. Um, Bombasso, good to see you, man. Yeah, Jim, it depends. You know, I mean, some you might you might strike it strike it rich, and and you know somebody else's settings will work well for you. But I kind of think it's probably less likely rather than more you know um yeah <laughs> Mombasa, it's the, you know i was just talking about the fact that everybody on earth has got monday off except for except for americans because we have to generate revenue we have to increase our gdp these are the important things in life you know um What was I going to say? Oh, I was going to say, Kashif, remember when, uh, if, if ever you, like, if you're ever thinking, like, oh, Jesus, this doesn't look that good, just remember, like, four years ago, we were running prepared. Or, like, FSX. <laughs> and, uh, I remember right before, uh, no, no Monday off for me, Bob. Nope. Not me, senor. Which is gonna be kind of funny because I don't have anything. I mean, I've got stuff to do, but like most of my, like I said, most of what I do is involves people in London, none of whom are gonna be working on Monday. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's odd, you know. I mean, up until when I lived in Germany, tw I mean, it is 20 years ago now, but when I lived in Germany. On Sundays, nothing was open but gas stations. Like, you were, it was, you know, you were, you had Sunday home with your family. You know, I mean, this is somebody who said about that. Yeah, <laughs> Bob. That's, and I tell you what, like, those days, yeah, Kashif, exactly. And Chris, the thing is, like, you know, upgrade when you want to. I, I right now, I wouldn't upgrade until Microsoft 24 comes out. Yeah, Jim, totally. I mean, this, this, I, I remember when it, when, you know, simmers tend to be kind of a grouchy bunch. And I remember when this first came out, and we don't, I don't think we realize like how much this sim has evolved in the last, you know, what is it, three and a half years now, close to four years. Um, I mean, it was pretty rough around the edges when it first came out. But like, to me, even flying the 172, or the 152, which is what I flew a lot when I first got this sim, after like after a very short period of time, I was like, I, I cannot go back to to prepared. I just can't, you know. Once you got used to how beautiful it looked, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I tell you a funny story too. So the, the New York New York State Thruway just built like a whole bunch of new. Um, through it, they just like revamped all the throughway rest stops, and they and they heaved out all the uh, all the old like fast food joints, and they they must have opened it up for a new contract or whatever. And so one of the new contracts that came that one of the companies that got one of the new contracts was Chick Fil A, and of course Chick Fil A is closed on Sundays, so now we have highway rest stops with restaurants that are closed on Sunday. 
Like, and I completely respect Chick Fil A for that. That's what they want to do. But like, who in the New York State Thruway giving out contracts didn't realize this? And now the now the state of New York is all worked up about it, and they're they're trying to like pass a law saying that you that like if you've got a restaurant on a on a public highway or whatever, you have to be open on Sundays. Well, maybe you should have checked before you signed the contract. That that's what the I mean. He's like, ay ay ay, bamba. So welcome aboard. It's 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 you knew, but you're not. Thank you, sir, for joining up. I appreciate that, Bombasso. You the man. Yeah, Robert, so the thing, people people are obsessed about Chick-fil-A, and I tried it like twice. I'm like, eh, Kentucky Fried Chicken's better, in my opinion. Um, Chris, I had a similar car. I, th- I, had a, I think I had an RX 380, maybe. Still, Chris, or Ben, really? Yep. Yep. Yeah, last time I was in Germany was 2019, and like it was, it was a little different, but not much in terms of Sundays. Uh... Yeah, Bombasa, the, 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 you, I don't know what it is about, I don't know what it is about Simmers, but, like, we complain about everything. <laughs> we complain about everything, and I'm just, you know, I mean, at this point, you can't complain, because it's, it's, it's developed so beautifully over time, you know? Uh, the sim is absolutely mind blowing. I I think uh, I think twenty four is gonna be even better. I know twenty four is gonna be even better. Hey Ben, vielen Dank. Yeah, ja, ich habe lange kein Deutsch mehr gesprochen, also sehr selten. Um, ich rede ab und zu mit meiner Familie, meiner alten Gastfamilie hier in Deutschland, aber ja, ich habe sehr selten die Gelegenheit Deutsch zu sprechen, aber das geht noch. Das verlernt man nicht, ne? Geht noch einigermaßen. Und wir waren 2019 waren wir wieder, äh, waren wir eine Woche in Hamburg und es kam ganz schnell wieder. Ganz schnell wieder. Alright, we're getting a little high here. Yeah, you know, Robert, the thing the thing about it is is like I've I've come to realize it like my lives really aren't that much. I mean, for some people, their lives are, are, are very much affected. But for me, I used to get all worked up about stuff. And you know what? It's just not worth it. And the funny thing is, is like, when we talk about like people who disagree on things, a lot of us disagree on paper. And like, we disagree, like if you're watching your you know, chosen network of choice or whatever. The other guy's wrong and blah blah blah. You know what? Like life life's too short to worry about a lot of this stuff. It really is. You know? It's kinda of one of the one of the funny things about the Caribbean, especially Anguilla. Like you could get a Trump supporter and a Bernie Sanders supporter in Anguilla and they'd be like, Hey, let me buy you a beer you know? <laughs> Life's too short. Life is too short. But New York is getting a little wacky, though. I'll agree with you on that one. <laughs> yeah, Bob. Uh, the the freaking lines at some of these places. It's like you gotta be kidding me. For for the freaking chicken sandwich, fried chicken sandwich. Like, come on. I've had good fried chicken in my life. Like, I've never had good fried chicken. You know, like, I mean, Kentucky fried chicken's fine. Don't get me wrong. But like, yeah, I'm not waiting a half hour for that stuff either, you know. <laughs> Son keeps asking me for cake. <laughs> so let me check. Uh, let me check where. Oh yeah, you guys are gonna get there well ahead of us here. Um, 
Ben, ich, ich habe Freunde in Köln. Ich habe ganz gute Freunde in Köln. Das ist eine ganz coole Stadt. Ich sag dir auf jeden Fall Bescheid, wenn ich da hingehe. Wer einmal für, ähm, was nennt ihr das wieder, ähm, Karneval, war einmal für Karneval in, äh, in Köln. Das war 2000, vielleicht 2000. Ganz cooler Stadt. Ganz cooler Stadt. Yeah, exactly, Ian. Exactly. I mean, and the funny thing is how that all developed. Like, so many, so, so much of, like, kind of what we're used to now developed completely organically. Like, the, what's, I forget the name of that team that works on the, uh, that works on the Garmin stuff for a Sobo. But they were, they were just like a group of, like, four or five guys when the sim first came out um robert i li i live near utica nowadays i i lived and worked in new york city for a long time i grew up in oneonta if you've ever heard of oneonta but i live i live like utica ish nowadays love it out here too love it out here working title exactly um those that was just a group of like friends who were computer programmers and they were like yeah we can make this better and their first project was the uh and, I'm, and i keep getting women's underwear uh ads during these streams which is really weird um and uh they they just started doing with the what is it the um the citation they did the citation and uh, and that was kind of how they, you know, how they started. I I'm probably should start descending here. Don't quite know how far away I am, but um, yeah. And they and then and then Asobo hired them, which is like wacky. Imagine that. Um. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I so my I have a lot of family down in that area, Robert. That's where that, I was born in Rhinebeck, and uh, I used to live in Cold Spring when I used to travel down when I used to work in the city a long time ago. I've been, I've been working from home since 2006, so when COVID wasn't much of a change for me, at least work-wise, anyway. Um, but what, Robert, what amazes me about that part of the, the state nowadays is how unbelievably expensive it is. I mean, places that used to be, you know, yeah. I mean, places that used to be, like, podunk little towns now like you're looking at like half million dollar houses and stuff it's, it's crazy absolutely crazy Putnam Valley okay yeah 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 very familiar with that part of the world yeah I mean there is so much money in New York State now it's absolutely unbelievable I'm kind of glad I got out of that area when I did I was I, remember what, <laughs> I was paying 850 bucks for a shoebox in Cold Spring about 20 years ago, and that's probably probably double that now. But ah, uh, here we got some traffic back there. So yeah, there we go. We got back there. That is Mr. Bridgman. That is Mr. Bridgman back there. And then we've got Captain Hunter here off the side. Oh yeah, I gotta let's see here. We gotta matriculate over this way because we gotta make a downwind here. Alright, awesome Jim, thank you. 350 12 gusting 26. Woohoo! 
Okay. 35012 gust in 26. Well, that shouldn't be too bad, actually. Runway 35. Shouldn't be too bad. Is it 34 or 34? 34, yep. So, as long as I can manage to not hit one of these mountains, I think we should be pretty good. Rule number one of flying don't hit mountains. Yeah, Robert, so my. <laughs> we have weird things to talk about on streams, but, uh. Yeah, they, Chris, we thought about it, but the they were on the other side of the mountains on the, on the southern coast of Cuba. There was a couple of them. So unfortunately, we missed them. But um, um, yeah, Robert, it, it's it's gotten ridiculous. It's gotten ridiculous. The thing is, is people, are, you know, people are getting taxed out of their houses in, in southern New York. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I can, I, I can understand a lot of things, but people shouldn't have to, like... It shouldn't be expensive to live in your own house, you know? Like, I don't know. I always hear this... You hear all this stuff about people leaving New York, people leaving New York. <laughs> Apparently nobody's leaving. <laughs> hey, Andrew, what's going on? We are still in the beta. We are still in the beta, sir. Um... Yeah, Wilbur, I can see you. Let me see. If, uh, maybe I can see you. I think you're a little bit further distance away. I only saw like a little flick of uh, of Jim's lights there. And, and I, I may hit him out here. This would be unfortunate. I have been, I have been streaming for... What, three months now and I haven't I've yet to hit something, which is really impressive, I think. Yeah, it's you know people get worked up about income taxes. I don't think income taxes are a big deal at all. What's a big deal is property taxes. Property taxes kill people. You know. Property taxes will kill people. That's what makes upstate New like central New York great. It's beautiful out here. Bravo 737, what's going on? What is happening, sir? You're probably getting geared up for your stream, aren't you? Group flight here pretty soon. Uh, no, that was yesterday. I don't even know what day it is. I, I was <laughs> uh, we are landing runway 34. Yeah, landing one way three four. This is pretty cool. I didn't realize it was gonna be like this coming down here. So the airport's gotta be kinda up there. We'll kinda negotiate our way down. Look, see this is another thing that I love is how well delineated the, the edges of of uh, like peaks and stuff are, how well you can see them in the sim now. I mean, that looks great. In my opinion. So. Let's see. I mean, that, that just looks so good. But, Andrew, yes, we still are in the beta, and they actually released a new one yesterday. So, this is 138. Dot one one just left of that bay. Okay. Oh yeah. See, that's the thing is I always look for. I, I like looking for uh, for airports on the water. I love overwater landings. Overwater landings are good stuff. I'm about to stretch it. I look at the rain showers out there. You guys see that? Looks fantastic. Oh, okay, there's the runway right there. 
Alright, we'll stretch it out here a little bit. I mean, look at how good this looks. I mean, it looks fantastic. Where'd you go, Bravo? Where'd you guys fly? Turn this into somewhat of a downwind. I was looking, I was really looking to get into my 737 today, but I just didn't get a chance. With, with work and everything else. And the most important role that I have is taking care of my dog, in his opinion, of course. I mean, the world will come to an end if my dog doesn't get his dinner at exactly the right time. I would probably go extra swoof over here. Probably go. I don't quite need fuel pumps on, but I do need to start. Um, ben, you know what's funny? I I tried it real quick, and uh, and I actually put him up to six k. I think it was like sixty one forty four, and uh, and it looked really good. And then I just I un I undid it at one point when I was doing some testing. I'm gonna I want to do I don't like making a whole bunch of changes at the same time and then not not knowing what might affect performance and what what, what doesn't. Um, so go a few pumps on here. Actually, this is gonna be a really slow ground speed final, isn't it? Because we're going into a pretty stiff wind. So. Um, so it looked really good, but uh, I'm gonna—I I just wanted to get some of the other changes kind of settled in, and then I will do the uh, the shadow thing. It's funny because I've thought about doing that shadow thing for a long time. I just haven't. I've read about it a million times. But yeah, I'm gonna do that. Oh, and I'm on, Ben. I'm also doing the uh, the high priority thing right now. As a matter of fact. All right, mixtures are rich. Fuel pumps are on. Um, we are going way too fast. Way too fast. So let's pull the nose up here a little bit. Let's pull the nose up here a lot. Peru to Chile. I love flying. Like I've flown to a lot of places down there, like El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras. Like it's it's really fun flying those those routes. Flown in, in Brazil quite a bit. All right, come on, airplane. Can you slow down, please? This is a good thing about the Islander, is I know I can still make this runway perfectly fine. Alright. Look at it. Do a little forward slip here. A little... Eh, that'll get us down. Pictures and props full forward, fuel pumps are on, flaps are set. Seat belts are secure. What a cool little airport. He says crashing into the beach. right there. Alright. Lean the mixture. 
Yeah, you know what, uh, Ben? I didn't have a chance to get it installed. I thought about it right before the flight. But it will make its debut soon, I promise. It looks so cool. I loved it. I thought about it right before the flight. Nice. Bravo, do that. I would love to see what you guys what you guys did. That was really I love flying in that part of the world. Some really cool flying down there. Oh, okay, Ben. Yeah, I the, I only looked at the at the shadows and static yesterday. Got a few pumps off, the flaps up, and here we go. Who's coming in? This is a pretty cool airport. Looking good. Better landing than mine. <laughs> yeah, that was a floater. But I was I, I was too high energy the entire time. Like I'm I I'm of the I, I don't like side slips I, or forward slips to landing. So I think if if you need unless unless it's an emergency, and you've got to get into a spot. I personally think if you need to forward slip to get down, then you should go around and actually set yourself up properly. My humble opinion. See, he's sim pilot. You want to You guys want to see an airplane get greased? Grease spill on runway three four. So this is a cool airport. Wilbur Hunter. My biggest disappointment in Sim Update 15 not coming out the other day is that uh, I'm going to take this side is that I'm still all by myself on On, uh, on these flights. Ooh, let's see if I see anybody else coming in here. Alright, throttles to idle, mixtures to idle, cut off. Oh, and I probably should have put the. <laughs> I left the carb heat par partially on, which wasn't really helpful. Um, alright, avionics, master off, lights coming off, mags off, master and battery switches off, let's go, boarding steps, let's go, chocks, and we're good, Z sim pilot going to do a slip to a landing, let me see if I can get a good view here, of anybody who might be coming in. Hmm. I can't get it to hold looking up, which is sort of annoying. Um, let me see who's coming in. Who's, who do we got here? So we got Captain Hunter here on my side. Got Jim420, Julia Echo. Let's see what my landing rate was. 140 feet a minute. I can't. I, the Z Sim pilot lands seven three sevens better than I can land this thing. It's crazy. But uh, base. A good flight. Good flight today. Let's see here. Let's see here. Who we got coming in. Uh, 
I don't know what I'm going to do this weekend without a stream to do. And I got, we got family coming in. Might not be able to fly, which would be... Should be a depressing thing. Captain Hughes, what's your location, sir? I can't see... Uh... ATR hops around Europe are fun, too. ATR, ATR hops, period, are fun. Just landed, so I must not see you on the... How was your landing, Cap? You're at East USA. So I must not see you on the uh, on the old simulator. So yeah. So that was a good flight. So next. Uh, Next up is going to be northwest bound to, in a, to Great Inagua. And I, I've been saying Iguana. It's Inagua. And then we're going to go up and see my Iguana. And then I, I do want to take a... I want to get up to at least Exuma Island. Because that's a cool... That's a cool one. And, uh, <laughs> Mishko Blue, if you've got that, post that to the, post that to the Discord so you can see it. That'd be awesome. I at least want to go up to, to, uh, to, um, Exuma. Because that's a cool island. We'll go up, we'll go up at least that far and we can turn around come back and go over the, the Bahamas, oh, the Turks and Caicos. We've got a couple waypoints and a couple points of interest in the Turks and Caicos, and then uh, and then head back down probably to the Dominican, and then we'll head back east, head back east, and then south. This has been a cool, uh, cool little hop around Cuba so far. It's good stuff. Um, no, I don't think I have been. Ben, I haven't been out that way. Um, Chris is just coming in. Let me see if I see you on... Oh, I think I need to go. Yeah, here we go. Ah, there we go. Wow, that's a long flight you've done, man, from Key West. That's a good that's a good distance there. There's a couple people on the ground up at a pretty good amount of flying going on around Cuba. I wanna check the uh that D Diamond DA forty. Kinda interested in that plane. Uh, yeah, kind of. This is a good time. This is an interesting flight. I enjoyed this one. Oh, oh, that one the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just mixed. I I forgot what it was called. Yeah, we went up to. Uh, we that was. Uh, yeah, it was the first time. That was our first stop in Cuba. Exactly. And that was the one that's also the. Uh, The hand, the handcrafted airport, right from from a Sobo. That one was really pretty cool. That was actually very cool. Yeah, Cap, I don't see you. That's unfortunate. But yeah, that was a that was a cool uh, that was a cool airport. I don't. You wonder what like what makes them pick whichever airports they they redo because they did a couple weird ones in this. Uh, in this sim update, they did the 
um, or the world update. They did the uh, that one, and they did the, the that little one in in um, in uh, Haiti that we stopped in. That was a little little off the beaten path, you know. Which is a cool one. So Ben, have you been there actually, like in real life? Because that would be pretty sweet. Best beaches I've ever seen are Anguilla. Never seen anything like Anguilla. Anguilla is unbelievable. Anguilla is unbelievable. Can't wait to go back. Only another five months and I'll be there. It's pretty sweet. Been there before. Wow. That would be sweet. I would I would love to go to Cuba, but it's not in my future. So I have I have other interested parties in the uh, in my sphere who <laughs> who who will probably never want to set foot in Cuba for their own reasons. So, chances of me ever seeing Cuba are pretty slim. I would love to. I, I, I know, I have a couple friends who have been to Cuba, and they all say it's absolutely amazing. I'll say it's absolutely amazing. Let's see how far Chris out is. Yeah, he's not doing too bad. But yeah, he's still a bit, still a bit, still a bit to go for Chris. Um, well, I do have to get going here, ladies and gentlemen, because I have to. Uh, I I was recently informed that I have a a social engagement to go to at five o'clock, which is in forty minutes, and nobody told me about it until now. So. Um, <laughs> So I gotta hop off, guys. Chris, I apologize. I can't stay and, and watch your landing. But uh, oh, I I would, Chris. I re I really would. But like I said, I just I was just informed that my presence is required. You know, I've I've never been to Costa Rica either. I you know, it's I'm to the point where it's like, just in terms of like time and mainly time like i have to really kind of pick and choose where i'm gonna go you know um and uh so i'll probably never get to costa rica either although who knows but uh nowadays i, I literally I, all i want to do is just go to anguilla it's, all, it's literally all i want to do um but yeah i gotta get matriculating fellows um i wish everybody a fantastic Easter weekend. I know we're going to have a good time. we got some family coming up. And uh, looking forward to that. And uh, But I hope you guys all have a wonderful, wonderful, uh, wonderful family uh, time over the weekend. Bombasso, thank you so much. New jo new member of the channel, KC Pilot as well, who didn't, I don't think we ever heard from in the, in the chat, but he joined uh, as well, which is awesome. And, uh, Guys, I really appreciate it. I appreciate everybody turning up. I had a great time. I hope you guys did too. Um, Connor, Ben, Chris, Jim, Bob, Wilbur, um, Captain Hughes, Connor. It's been fantastic, guys. I really had a good time today. And uh, Bravo737, you as well. Thanks again for stopping in. And I look forward to seeing those pictures. And uh, Robert, take care. Hope everything's well down in the Hudson Valley. Andrew, good to see you as well. And uh, Chris, I hope you have a good landing, my friend. And uh, everybody have a great... And Ian as well. Uh, thank you for stopping in. Kashif, thank you. Good to see you. And uh, really appreciate it, guys. It was a good flight. It was a good time today. Hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. Happy Easter. And uh, Z Sim Pilot, it was awesome, man. Thank you so much for coming. Really appreciate it. Kashif, me too. Me too. Um, <laughs> Chris, I know that I, I, I can't 
I, I don't think I've ever done a, a slew in my flight sim history. But, uh, guys, thanks again. Really appreciate it. Felipe, how's it going? Uh, for sure. Yeah, there definitely is. There definitely is, Felipe. So, it's a good it's a good update. I like it. I think it's pretty good. Had had some uh some teething problems, but it's good now. Um but I got to hop off, fellas. I got to get ready for my uh got to go get myself ready for this uh social engagement. And I hope you guys all do well. I hope you have a great weekend and thanks everybody again for for stopping in. If it wasn't for you guys, I'd just be talking to myself. And I really appreciate everybody. Take care, guys.